All right, everyone, this is the unit where we we put it together and we take a big step forward, all right? In the end of the first unit, we characterized the criteria that the supercomputer running our alien colonists world would use to optimally allocate resources across society. It was a society that was trying to decide how to split up labor and capital to build food and shelter. And we came up with three conditions that any allocation would need to satisfy in order to be Pareto efficient. And Pareto efficient, as we said, is not good enough, basically. It's like, it's not a criteria that is automatically, uh, like once you achieve it, you're done, but it is a minimum threshold. If you have a arrangement of society that is not Pareto efficient, there are better society arrangements out there, okay, where people can be have more of their preferences satisfied without anyone being worse off. Now, the problem with the supercomputer was even though it could, we had a set of rules that it could follow to find a Pareto efficient allocation, it faced four problems in allocating these in the real world. And as I said, even though that like uh, this is a hypothetical sci-fi story, this kind of thought experiment can apply to also trying to make a plan for running a society without markets uh, that's much more complicated than just having two goods and two types of inputs, okay? So the four problems that our computer faced were, one, which Pareto outcome, which Pareto efficient outcome should be selected? The economics profession can't really give guidance on that. It's That's a domain of political science, philosophy, ethics, things like that. Two, how does the supercomputer learn the information it needs to compute the best way to allocate society? It needs to know people's preferences, it needs to know production technologies, and it needs to know the resource base available to the economy. And in a real world implementation, obtaining that information could be costly and it could people may have incentives to lie or to misrepresent the resources, the production technologies, and so on. The third problem was computational complexity. Not something we normally think about in economics, but if you actually try to solve the mathematical representation of a of like a modern economy with not just two inputs and two out and two outputs, but millions of different types of inputs and millions of different types of outputs, to solve the mathematical representation of that may well be impossible for modern computers. So that's another big problem. Fourth, we called this principal agent problems. Essentially, how do you get people to follow your plan if they don't like what the plan says that they should do? And you can use incentives like carrots and sticks. You can deploy efforts to monitor them, guard them, you know, force them to do things. But if freedom itself gives people utility, that's bad. That's not a society that they want to live in. And also, it's like just wasteful if you have to spend a lot of resources kind of monitoring and making sure everybody does everything. Okay, so now we're going to show that under the right assumptions, using a market will achieve all of our goals. It will get us a Pareto efficient outcome and almost all of those problems will be taken care of. So we're going to be basically showing in this unit that markets... Uh, achieve exactly what you would want if you had like a supercomputer running society. A super, even a supercomputer running society would face certain problems that markets don't face. So let's dig in and see how markets do this.